Well, hi, my name is Mark. I'm doing a little research and thought I'd share what I'm seeing. Uh, this happens to be the Mean Street by Vitek, which is uh, fuel control only, really. Uh, yeah, it can do a two-step. Uh, it can also do fuel assist for nitrous oxide, but it is not was never intended to do um, really anything other than uh, fuel assist, uh, no boost, uh, you know, no boost as it sits and so forth. Well, anyhow, uh, I'm actually pretty happy with this. Although I, I was going to do a little research, I thought maybe I'd uh, take the time to mock up uh, what I'm doing. Um, personally, I'm not very uh, impressed with the uh, resolution of the VE table and such and I was looking to get a little better uh, resolution and so that makes me look at things like Megasquirt and others um, but if I'm going to do that my intention is to basically repurpose the existing Mean Street hardware and just control it off of something like a Megasquirt. Uh, in order to do that I needed to do a little research and see what kind of connectors we've got and so forth but for those of you who haven't maybe serviced one of these yourself, I thought maybe I'd point out to you that we've got, uh, it's actually a very well-built, uh, solid, serviceable uh, system. Um, what I'm not going to show you today is that underneath of this cover right here is the ECU or electronic control unit. Now, what you'll see if you ever get the opportunity to tear into it is that the harnesses that I'm going to show you in just a few seconds, they actually come down through this channel right here for the passenger side and a similar channel on the uh, driver's side. And then as they make it into the ECU, they're soldered in place. And the manufacturer, whoever it really is, you know, we'll call it Phytech, um, they epoxy coat the circuit board and so forth. Uh, and the reason behind that is not is not to prevent you from doing something with it, but really it protects it from the environment, from corrosion and so forth. You know, so I'm sure that they do their um, assembly, their QC and so forth, and then they um, epoxy it and send it out. So, all right. So here, here it is. So you're you know you're aware with you know, here's your fuel rail. Uh, you've got your return line here. You've got your vacuum uh, controlled uh, pressure regulator. So what I'm going to do is I've actually already taken this apart and haven't put it all the way back together. I thought maybe I'd show somebody who hasn't done it before. So I'm going to remove my vacuum line here. Then I'm going to take, there are two screws. Um, you should be able to see there's, there's one here and there's one here that allow for the uh, this fuel rail and cap assembly, you'll see why I call it a cap, uh, to, to hold solid to the, uh, the rest of the throttle body. So I'm gonna take these screws out. I've already actually taken them out once and just put them back in relatively hand tight. And normally they'd be in the, I've actually got the injectors hanging down out of view but normally you'd have to you know, fudge with it a little bit in order to get past the injectors. And what you do is you'd have to kind of pull it up at a 45 degree angle as you're pulling it out, and I'll show you why in a moment. So that would be up and out all at the same time. And that leaves you with this, this fuel rail. Now, I'm gonna put it here so you can see what I'm working with and that little, um, so I'll point a few things out that, I'm, that I've observed. So they've done a real nice job. They've radiused, you know, these holes right here where the top of the fuel injector goes in. Uh, this passage here in the back and this passage here are for the uh, fuel input. Then it gets past the regulator and pressurizes the back side of this. This hole here and this hole here are actually the passages that cross the throttle body to allow both sides of the rails, you know, the driver's side and passenger side, 
to exchange fuel at adequate pressures. Now, you're gonna see as I rotate this down, you're gonna see that I've actually already got the injectors out and they're hanging down here. I'll take one and rotate it up. And by the way, if you're taking these out and putting them back in, uh, recommend that you make sure that they're well lubricated because you, and that you be cautious with them so that you don't cut your injector O-rings. Uh, so you can see now that it comes in at an angle and this end right here actually goes into those ports that I pointed up above as being well radiused. This is your power or control wire to the injector and in my case since I've got eight injectors I have eight wires and you can see here that it's really rather standard although what's unique about this I think is that they're 90 degrees or more or less yeah they're 90 degrees so that means that when I go to build my new harness I'm gonna to have to find those same kind of connectors um, now a couple things I want to point out again how well it's made is that Within the throttle body itself, right here, you'll see that there's a channel. Well, there are O-rings that, uh, that would go into that. And I'm gonna go ahead and show you here. So this is one of the O-rings. And if you see, it's a little wide right there as I rotate it. And that's because I've had it apart a couple of times and those O-rings have begun to get cut. So I'm gonna replace them on this go around. But they would go right here. And there's one here and one in the back. And although I've not had the other side apart, I presume it's built a identical to it. Now, um, down here below, we have what I believe is our throttle position sensor. And you notice how well, you know, it's harnessed right here as well and it comes back down. There's a lot, a whole lot of, of uh, wire size in this loom. So I don't think it'd be too big of a problem to build a new uh, harness. But nicely, they've got this nice channel underneath here. As you can see, I'll pull it back some. I can pull this out as well. And you can see that there's this really nice channel down inside of here that would allow me to build a new harness and reuse those same uh, passages. This happens to be the IAC stepper motor, if I didn't mention it before. This one coming down is the uh, oxygen sensor. Then out in front, uh, out of the ECU, is the uh, temperature sensor, and then far over here is the power. Now, in short, what I'm saying is that I think this is a well-built uh, piece of hardware. I've not had any problems with it. I think it would be extremely serviceable. And I'm thinking as long as I can get the parts, I should be able to essentially remove this cover with all the harnesses and you know, leaving all the existing harnesses in place, then um, build new harnesses for my existing injectors, existing sensors, and uh, control the whole unit from the uh, something like a mega squirt. So that's it. Um, I hope this is uh, some assistance to everybody. Thanks again.